um, for sale to the industry and we're looking at how we can get them um, greater profile within the industry so that they can they can market their offerings. Um, the SLHDA is not a government funded institution. It is private sector, 100% yeah. um, private sector. And so we are growing as the demands are being placed upon us. Now, we're trying to honor that given the, the financial constraints and the manpower constraints that we have. I have five officers who work with me, all dedicated professionals, all experts in their field, people who I am very, very proud of. But at the end of the day, there are only so many hours in the day. And um, if you would give us some time and, and as you allow us to, to, to turn these opportunities into success stories, then slowly but surely we will reach out to other communities and other groups um, desiring that type of assistance. But please understand that as committed and as honorable our intentions are, we too have our constraints, you know? Indeed, but I would say to that um, caller, it would be good to register your, your concern and to place on, on the record by calling into the SLHD um, or at least a representative of an organization writing in to commence the process because it has to I be welcome a first that. step. I welcome that. Um, as, as I've said earlier, if they would be kind enough or, or willing enough to call 453-1811, you can speak with one of my officers who would be happy to schedule an appointment that we can sit down and discuss some of the challenges. Sure. Good night. You're on the air. Yes, good night, Jadia. Hi, good night. And good night, Mr. Aziz. Good night. Yeah, Mr. Aziz, my question is, um, although I must uh, admit that I am very much impressed with what the SLHD has been able to achieve thus far, but we know how difficult it is for our small farmers especially to secure funds, you know, for purchasing of equipment and so on and so on. Can some of those funds be used to assist the farmers in the interstate direction? Thank you for your, your question, Carla. A lot of demands being placed mm -hmm. on, on, on the fund and on mm -hmm. the issue of equipment and support to our farmers, beyond, mm -hmm. of course, that exchange for goods and, and services. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there, in the past few weeks, there has been a discussion on certain models that we find very interesting. Soft loan facilities, if you will, which are offered by certain um, companies that would allow farmers access to um, funds to, to, to invest in inputs, whether they may be technological or seeds or, or whatever it is. Um, the Hotel and Tourism Association is currently looking at the models available on Ireland and very shortly we expect to have a discussion. Actually this forms part of our new initiatives proposed for the next year, the next 12 months, and we're going to be looking at um, trying to rational, rationalize a system of that nature that uh, we can participate in that would allow uh, the creation of some facility, form of facility that would offer soft loans to farmers, small farmers um, interested in accessing it. So um, that discussion has started a few weeks ago and it, it forms part of, of what we propose as our in new initiatives over the next 12 months. Indeed, I, um, I just got a reminder, please do not forget to address the issue of taxes and marketing to the region. Grenada, Dominica, Barbados, yes, they're small and they're close to us, but they're important as well. I think once we can get your comments on that, we'll move to your closing remarks so that we could end. The whole issue of taxes. Yes. Yeah. Um, the, the position that we have proposed as an industry, um, I think, has borne fruit in the past few years. We have seen proof of the argument that if we create an environment that, um, that facilitates a healthy private sector, which is allowed to reinvest its profits into um, diversification, mm -hmm. um, we are going to see um, an increase in remittances um, of transactional taxes like your VAT. Okay. And um, I think, I, well, I personally am very curious to drill down to the figures um, to see what has been the intake of VAT as a result of the increase in, 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 in tourist arrivals to the oh, destination. Yeah, that, that, right? would that would be interesting. That would be very interesting. Yeah. Because as these, as we have huge increases in these transactions, yes. we expect there to be um, a, 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 a direct correlation in the increase um, in taxes. So all we have argued for over the past few years basically has been to say, listen, 
um, allow the private sector entities an opportunity to reinvest, um, to grow, to generate employment, to market, to strengthen the quality of their offerings, um, and which we believe will result in more dependable throughput of, of taxes, um, of revenue to the government through taxes like your, your VAT. Um, so it is, it is a position that we still subscribe to, and we believe that um, very soon, um, you know, the, the, we will see that that argument bear fruit in terms of um, the remittances of VAT um, to the inland revenue. And, and there is much more that can be done to tap into the um, regional tourists. Absolutely, and um, we have conceded to that, um, both in terms of marketing and in terms of being very creative on how we grow the airlift. Um, I will, I have I've heard the experts um, comment on the, the amount of um, taxes that governments place on, um, on, on the airlines and yes. on, on the ticket taxes. Um, but you know, at, at the end of the day, we too respect the fact that you, you need to create a very competitive environment if you're gonna drive down the cost to the consumer. Mm -hmm. in, a, in an environment of, 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 of competitiveness, the consumer is the one who benefits at the end of the day. So um, we are very much in favor of a discussion that creates that type of an environment, but we too are sympathetic to the fact that governments do depend on taxes in order to ensure that education is provided, that the streets are properly paved, and that um, health care is provided to the citizens, you know, um, that, that the public debt um, is serviced. Um, so we, we're not um, in any way denouncing, you know, taxes per se, but it must be done in an environment that stimulates private sector reinvestment. It has to. Indeed, as we come to the end of the program, I'd like to get from you your own view on your outlook, um, at least for the remainder of 2015. Um, I think it, it would be one of cautious optimism. We are certainly not out of the woods. Mm -hmm. um, a token increase in arrivals does not constitute um, you know, a windfall of cash for anyone. Um, and the proof is in the pudding, you would see that there is an absence of that trickle down to the common man in terms of the tourism dollars. Um, you, have you will still see very um, um, a high de heightened degree of hesitance on the part of the private sector to readily invest because as it stands right now, um, for a tourism related enterprise to get a loan from the bank, um, it's, it's a nightmare right now. Um, so that, that, that faith has still not registered or resonating with the financial sector. And, and these are things that we have to be mindful of. At the end of the day, we need to keep our doors open to our guests. We need to ensure that our staff um, get paid, that they're offered opportunities for promotion um, as well. And we need to ensure that that connectivity with other industries, um, other linkage, and welcome to another edition of In Touch with me, JDS Jopier Emmanuel. I did inform you, those of you on social media, that my guest tonight will be Mr. Nurani Aziz. He's the Chief Executive Officer of the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association. Last week, we had in studio Mr. Louis Lewis, he's the Director of Tourism, and he briefed us on St. Lucia's position so far. We also looked um, to get a discussion going on what has led to some of the successes that we have been enjoying so far and we did spend some time on the, the way forward the future i did indicate to you that we'll try to take the discussion a little further and to look at a different perspective we needed to focus not just on government's efforts and on the position of the St. Lucia Tourism Board, but to speak to the movers and shakers in the industry, really. Very interesting to note whether the views of the SLHTA are as optimistic and as upbeat and exciting as that of the SLTB, not to create any controversy or conflicts, but we are here with the CEO of the SLHTA so that we can speak to their own experiences, we can speak to the various collaborations and, and partnerships between the government of St. Lucia the SLTB and the SLHTA and we really would like to know of course I know many of you want to know what is really happening on the ground what are the views of our hoteliers are they as excited as we are 
Um, the increases we have been seeing in tourism, for example, that impressive 6% increase, does it translate to dollars and cents? Is all well in the tourism industry in St. Lucia. And so, without any further comments, I would want to welcome Mr. Aziz to the show. Thank you so much for agreeing to be here tonight. Good evening. You're welcome. And so, the very first question would be, how is tourism in the eyes of your association? Well, clearly, it is the ideal sector to do business in. This is why, of course, you would be here. But in terms of um, performance, in terms of the general feeling, the general mood among the hoteliers and your other members, are they as excited as the government of St. Lucia and the SLTB um, would be about the figures that we are seeing? Yeah, I think generally there's a sense of, of excitement um, of the fact that we are pacing a lot better this winter over last winter. And I think that has been um, sustained for a, a, few, a few months now. Um, and, and generally there is a, there is, everyone seems to be very focused on the business at hand, which is trying to ensure that the guest has the most wonderful time during their stay on the island. But I think when the smoke clears, there's going to be a lot of soul searching and a lot of reflection after the winter's over regarding um, how do we ensure that this type of growth is sustainable and whether or not St. Lucia is best poised to take full advantage of the opportunities that a burgeoning tourism industry presents. The figures suggest that our hotel rooms are, are filled. Mm -hmm. um, information coming out of um, the ministry also suggests, the SLTB also suggests that um, our bookings seem to be doing a bit well. So it's not just the current period, but the projections moving further down to the end of the year seem to be very positive as well. What do you think has led to this growth that we're experiencing, um, particularly in the stay over arrivals? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, one of the things which causes um, concern is uh, how sensitive tourism is to a lot of global issues. So notwithstanding um, forward bookings, which look very, very good, it's, it's, it's easy to, to understand that shift in, um, in matters related to safety in certain countries, shifts in, in matters related to the value of currencies in certain areas, will certainly have an almost immediate impact on the consumer because they are a lot more connected to the information now than they were 10 years ago. And so that shift, that decision is just the click of a mouse away, right? That, that is something to be mindful of. So it's not to say that um, last year it was 6% and January it was up 14% or whatever the figures are, and that that is gonna be a, a something to bank on um, in the in, in the coming, over the coming summer, for example, because if it was bankable, I think it would be an easier conversation with the financial sector. Um, but I think generally there is a degree of, um, of hope within the industry that, um, that the, 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 the marketing strategies that we've been employing so far seem to be um, generating sensible um, returns. And more importantly, you know, that uh, Lady Luck is on our side because there are a lot of things globally conspiring in our favor right now. Um, so while we must take the time out to pat ourselves on the back uh, for what we're doing well, uh, which is a more, more or less um, a more clinical um, and strategic use of marketing dollars to generate maximum return on investment, it's also even more important that we stop and ask ourselves, what are we doing wrong? Where, are the room, where, where do we have room for improvement? And of course, what are our competitors doing? Um, in order to boost their own gains from tourism. I think I'll ask you a question that I asked um, Mr. Lewis last week, and it is because of some of the feedback I've been hearing from members of the public. There are some who are of the view that, you, you referred to Lady Luck a while ago, that it is just pure luck that we are registering these figures. In 2013, for example, we had 317,000 silver arrivals, mm -hmm. and that was the best figure that we had had in the history of recording our numbers. By 2014, mm -hmm. we were at 338,000, um, and just a little bit over that and of course you indicated a little while ago that January and February we seem to be doing extremely well and the projections are that we would surpass last year. Some are of the view that this is by no stroke of genius or because of any direct strategy being employed by St. Lucia, but it is simply because we are just beneficiaries of some of the mishaps 
of some of our competitors, you are directly involved, I'm sure, and you would be keeping tabs on what the other islands are doing, particularly our competitors within the same region. Do you think that our successes are directly related to some of their challenges, or is it that St. Lucia is doing what needs to be done and is strategically marketing the destination to attract new visitors? You know, quite frankly, I think it's a bit of both. I think we've seen a number of other destinations struggle over the past three years with trying to maintain an identity internationally, um, trying to position themselves in terms of um, their offerings compared to what's happening globally. And I think we have been able to capitalize on that to a certain extent by directing our marketing dollars to these certain niche markets and have been able to position the destination in such a way that um, we're now seeing a throughput of, of guests coming in. I, I sincerely doubt that the, 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 the increase in numbers that we're seeing right now uh, is solely due to marketing efforts that have been had in the recent past. I think it is a sustained effort over a period of time. It is important that the destination has a lot of stamina as it relates to being visible in the eyes of the guests over a, a, a long period of time so that people start aspiring to come to St. Lucia when um, they come into disposable income. Indeed. On the issue of marketing, um, and most of what we spend in tourism is, um, you know, towards marketing, what is the SLHTA's contribution, um, or the, the members, mm -hmm. what is their contribution to marketing? Because most times in the eyes of the public, mm -hmm. they see it as the SLTV doing all of the marketing, mm -hmm. and that the hoteliers are basically the beneficiaries of the tax dollar. Mm -hmm. um, is, is it a shared um, responsibility or effort between the SLTB and the SLHTA mm -hmm. as it relates to marketing? Or is the marketing left to the um, SLTB and the SLHTA would take on other aspects related to tourism? Now, over the past few years, there have, there have been a lot, of, um, a lot of inroads as it relates to ensuring that um, there's a greater degree of collaboration between the Tourist Board and the Hotel and Tourism Association. Right now, the president of the SLHTA sits on the, on the board of directors of the St. Lucia Tourist Board mm -hmm. and also co-chairs the marketing committee at the St. Lucia Tourist Board. The executive director of the St. Lucia Tourist Board is one of my directors on the, on the board of the Hotel and Tourism Association. So there is a lot of cross-fertilization of ideas because this has been engineered in order to ensure that um, there is full transparency in what is happening and that there is maximum um, cooperation as it relates to rolling out some of this um, information. Our hoteliers are very connected to the pulse of the, of, of the demographics that we're marketing, we're targeting, and that information is very useful at a tourist board level um, to inform the spending of dwindling marketing dollars. So there is basically shared, shared effort and shared responsibility, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. both in, addition, in terms of information and dollars. Right, because um, in addition to the, our president co-chairing the, the, the marketing committee of the SLTB, we also have another, a number of other directors um, from our board who sit on that specific committee. And of course, very often, there is um, co-sharing of the cost of ensuring that uh, penetration is made into certain markets. And now, given the um, Tourism Enhancement Fund, which we, we, I'm sure we'll be speaking about yes, a little later, indeed. there is now um, hard capital being put forward by the, by the Hotel and Tourism Association towards some of this marketing effort. Um, but separate and apart from that contribution, very often the hotels themselves uh, co-finance co some of these initiatives, um, some of these marketing initiatives. Indeed. I want to speak to um, some of the challenges that your members would have had during that period of growth that we're referring mm -hmm. to. Because sometimes when we are to look at the numbers on the, on the surface, mm -hmm. we may be tempted to assume that all is well in the tourism industry, mm -hmm. that in a period of economic decline, when other sectors in mm -hmm. St. Lucia's economy are struggling. We are getting extremely good figures from tourism. Um, not just the tourism um, stay over arrivals, but we are also understanding that visitor expenditure has increased as well. And last week, if I remember correctly, um, the director of tourism did indicate that whereas our rooms were heavily discounted in the past, there has been some, um, you know, our rates are a little bit higher than it would have been earlier. So this suggests to me that 
it is not just that the people are coming, but the people are coming and so there are benefits. They are spending a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Should we assume then that the hotels are doing much better than they would have mm -hmm. been doing probably three, four years ago? Well, there are a couple of things we have to put into context mm -hmm. uh, before we draw conclusions on that. The one is um, the issue of the trickle down of the dollar. Um, one would like to see that an increase in guest expenditure means an increase in, in, in revenue for persons on the other end of the non-accommodation spectrum. Right. And my feedback is that this is not necessarily so at this point in time. So we've got a long way more to go to sustain that if we're to experience that trickle down, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. The second thing is as it relates to the profitability of, of hotels, increase in occupancies, um, for us right now um, does not alleviate the challenges that we've had in the past years wrestling with the cost of operations and the cost of doing business. Um, right now, even at a property level, significant more dollars have to be allocated towards um, utilities, utility costs, um, human resource training and development, um, even more aggressive marketing in some of the, other, some of the destinations. Um, so, so an increase in, in um, in, in arrivals and increase in spending um, may not necessarily translate in that type of trickle down as quickly as we would like it. It may not translate in um, a healthier profit margin at the end of the, day, of the day because properties are now still, it is still too young, that experience. Properties are still struggling with financing debts which have been incurred over a number of years. That have, that have enabled them to um, stay abreast or keep their doors open at a time when the economy was contracting. It's very easy to look at a few months of increased arrivals and perhaps increased spending and get distracted from the reality that you've incurred a significant amount of debt over the, 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 the meager periods, the lean periods, in order to keep your shop open um, for these growth spurts. What about employment in the tourism yeah. sector? Have we seen uh, any decreases, increases, or are we basically flat in the um, area? I think more or less um, we have seen very marginal increases within the industry um, in terms of, of, of employment. Mm -hmm. I think it is um, a sign of the times globally. Every organization is trying to ensure because profitability and, um, and, and customer customer. Uh, interface with your organization can, can become so unpredictable. Um, you don't want to get to, to, to um, you don't want to fall asleep at the wheel when it comes to these issues. So I think many organizations are now coming out of this crisis period globally and they're trying to be a lot more, they're changing the dynamics of spending within the organization. They're trying to, to be, um, to stretch that dollar, uh, which is very understandable. So, so, so that increase in in occupancies when spread, spread across the, the length and breadth of the accommodation sector may not necessarily um, result in huge um, increases in employment. It may result in um, right sizing and more effective management. It may, it may result in increased productivity um, within organizations and increased efficiencies. But we are yet, we are quite some, some distance away from you know, massive increases in, in employment levels as a direct result of an increase in, in occupancies. Understood. On the issue of the challenges and some of the difficulties that we have seen over the past um, year, I can't help but um, mention the fact that despite um, some of our hotels that were in receivership now finding new owners and having a change of name, a change of direction. Mm -hmm. um, we have some changes happening as we speak. Cotton Bay, for example, recently closed down. There was a period of some um, difficult adjustments prior to that. Mm -hmm. And we also have um, the closure of smugglers. And that is so that there could be some renovation work so that it could be rebranded and reopened. Mm -hmm. In the period where we have increasing demand, more people are coming to St. Lucia, more people want to come to St. Lucia, what impact do you believe it would have on our ability to accommodate those individuals whom we have marketed the destination to? And I would assume too that um, there would, in some of these instances, be forward um, bookings. Do you anticipate any um, disturbances in that area or do you believe we have the capacity to absorb and to continue to market St. Lucia mm -hmm. um, as a destination of choice to as many persons who are willing and able to come at this time? 
Um, you know, whenever we go out there and we advertise or we market the destination, we're making a promise. A promise to a visitor that if you come here, we're going to be able to deliver on that promise. Mm -hmm. So guest expectation, visitor expectations are very key to how we structure our environment and, and position our companies locally. Um, it's never a pleasant thing to see properties go into foreclosure or liquidation. Um, it's a testament to the volatility of the industry and how unpredictable things can be. Um, we try as much as we can to band together and try to assist where, wherever we can, but the reality is that um, given the normal uh, ups and downs of, of the industry, um, the different management styles, um, different priorities from property to property, you're going to have some of the properties fall, falling away. It concerns me personally that, um, that a number of the smaller hotels, you know, just very well might be teetering on the edge as well right now. And I think that is something that as a, as a country we've got to pay particular attention to because it's not only an investor going out of business, but there are myriads and numbers of jobs that, that fall away, both directly and indirectly as a result of properties keeling over, you know. Um, as it relates to the, um, the, the, the ability of the industry to continue to absorb, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's really, I, I hear a lot of discussions from a lot of different experts on, on that issue right now. Um, we can only hope that there are some properties which have not, I mean, they seem to have tremendous staying power. They clearly have not performed as well as others over the past few years. And we're hoping that they are gonna be in a position to, um, <clears throat> to absorb some of, the, some of the, um, the displaced guests, if you will, from properties like uh, your Cotton Bay and properties that are, that are trying to, 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 to renovate or you know, rebuild th their brand in St. Lucia. Um, but one of the things we are, we are seeing as well, and that is another area that really is of serious concern to the SLHDA, is their proliferation of really unlicensed, unregistered um, accommodation entities. Guest houses, um, guest and houses and bed and breakfast and things of that nature. And I mean, notwithstanding the millions spent on marketing every year, um, the tens of millions spent on marketing every year, um, you could imagine one flawed guest experience in one of these entities, what it would do, it would really shatter the image of the island internationally. And I think we have a tremendous amount of work to do in terms of reaching out to these, to these various groupings and trying to get them to subscribe to certain standards, trying to get them properly regulated so that they too can pay their fair share into, make their fair share of contribution towards to the industry. Um, and it is something that it is not only um, a phenomenon locally, mm -hmm. but you know, regionally with the onset of websites like Airbnb and these, these um, sharing type portals, um, it's presenting quite a challenge for the formal business structures um, which employ Far, far larger numbers yeah. of persons and have made far greater financial investment. So the SLHD, we're we're trying to reach out right now as much as we can with the with the tourist board, to the Ministry of Tourism, to really flag this concern, and to really work with them as best we can to bring this specific groupings together and work with them to strengthen their marketing, um, their management structures, um, and their standards. Yeah. Indeed, I want to go to the area of investment, and it is something that, as a government, mm -hmm. we have tried to focus on a lot for the last um, two years. Um, there seemed to be a, an absence or slowdown in foreign direct investment, not just in, in the hotel and tourism sector, but other areas as well. In fact, most of um, the investments and, and PPPs seem to be focused in the area of infrastructure, road mm -hmm. development and, and so on. Energy efficiency. La Paradis um, remains, and mm -hmm. I know that Investing in Lucia is working extremely hard to try to get an investor or someone who has mm -hmm. an interest in that area. But we have Freedom Bay um, currently under construction. Mm -hmm. in, in Soufre. What is your own view or the outlook for investment in tourism in St. Lucia? The numbers look very good um, and we are seeing that the economy is, particularly the U.S. economy is bouncing back. Does that mean that we can be optimistic and that the figures and what it suggests would mean that there is a, a bright future, or at least some light somewhere mm -hmm. at the end of the tunnel as it relates to investment in tourism in St. Lucia? I'm, I'm encouraged. 
I'm encouraged um, not only at the potential of the new, the new, the, the new investments mm -hmm. and those on the horizon, but also by the discussion at, um, at the level of existing properties for expanding and adding on more rooms and amenities. Um, so that for me signals um, a reintroduction of investor confidence, albeit um, being mindful that the same U.S. economy, which we were all excited about a few years ago, went into a double dip recession, right? So notwithstanding that, that, that sense of caution, um, I am cautiously optimistic that there is a, there is a, a, a return of interest um, in the destination by investors. We do for our first commercial break. When we come back, we'll be continuing our discussion. Um, we will be focusing on that relationship between the SLHDA and the government of Sinatra in particular because you would recall that the Prime Minister introduced the Tourism Enhancement Fund and you also speak to a new effort by the SLHDA to get some of our young people trained and placed in the tourism industry. So we'll be getting an update from Mr. Aziz when we return after the commercial break. Welcome back to In Touch. My guest tonight is Mr. Narani Aziz. He's the CEO of the SLHTA. We'll be taking your phone calls as usual later on in the program. In the meantime, you can send your messages or your comments via email, BBM, or WhatsApp. Mr. Aziz, I want to focus on the activities of the SLHTA. I know you do much more than um, monitoring and, and marketing, and that there is a certain level of interface between the SLHTA and the public at large. Although many persons believe that um, the SLHTA is only concerned with its members and mm -hmm. with getting people you know, to, to um, come and fill the hotel rooms and so on, the Prime Minister announced in the budget that there would be an apprenticeship program um, funded by the SLHTA and also that there would be opportunities for not just training but employment um, within the tourism sector. Where are we so far with this initiative? You would appreciate that given the high unemployment um, rate, that many mm -hmm. persons would be looking for opportunities and want to begin to register growth and mm -hmm. numbers in the tourism industry, then mm -hmm. people will believe naturally that this is a place we should gravitate to. Have we made any progress so far um, with the apprenticeship program? Yeah, we've made significant progress in the apprenticeship program. Uh, the program was formally launched in December of last year. Okay. And it took us about a month of s or so to get the project manager on board um, to look at, to develop the various um, instruments to capture data, to sort out the application process, um, and to really get a good feel from our members who would be interested in subscribing and participating in the programs right now. Uh, we officially started placing apprentices in the middle of January. Uh -huh. And I think to date, my figures indicate that we have a little over 235 persons who have already started their apprenticeships with a number of companies. Beginning the, of January this year? From January to now, yeah. I mean, it's testament to a couple of things. One, to the, the, the confidence in an SLHDA-driven program, mm -hmm. um, and also to the fact that the need exists out there. Because when, when, I, when I speak with the project manager, I mean, I'm, I'm always happy to, to learn of, of individuals who have been displaced from a, a number of other sectors, mm -hmm. banking and, and data entry and data management, a number of other sectors um, who are interested in, in retooling themselves to take advantage of the opportunities that, that tourism promises. Mm -hmm. The challenge for the industry continues to be um, a very uh, meager pool of skill sets to pull from in order to plug into um, a number of, of, of opportunities that exist within the industry right now. But the program has got off to a very, very good start, and we're hoping that um, we'll be able to sustain that rate over the over the year. One of the very one of the things about the program that we're very excited about at the SLHDA is the fact that once you have come in through the program, <clears throat> excuse me, and you've done your apprenticeship, you are put on <clears throat> excuse me, you're put on a database mm -hmm. of of skills that would become the first access point to any employer that's interested in, in, in staffing his or her organization. Um, and of course, 
for the persons who are going to be on that database, there are going to be ongoing workshops and training sessions for them to ensure that um, they are job ready when the opportunity arises. We have a subscription of well over 1,600 persons right now um, trying to, to, to work out, you know, trying to get them placed. Um, but you can well appreciate the fact that the industry um, can only absorb that many over a certain period of time. But over 200, <coughs> certainly that is, that is remarkable in such a short space of time. Well, I think it's also well, a testament to... What are the projections? <coughs> are, we, are we looking to feel a certain number or is it yeah. simply based on the demand of the members? Well, our target is to try to, to, to hit 1,200 persons for the year. Mm. Okay. Um, <coughs> but that, of course, is going to be driven by um, the opportunities that, that, that exist within the industry. Um, in a few months, we expect to be expanding outside of the fold of the SLHDA to try to interest non-SLHDA member companies in participating in the program. But um, I think the success so far is a clear indication that the hotels and the SLHDA member companies um, are very keen and, and, and excited about participating in a program that would bring this, this type of um, um, uh, skills, skills training and development mm -hmm and also address some of the, the possible social social challenges that come come about as a result of unemployment. And from what you are saying, it suggests that you do not need any um, training or background in, in, in the tourism industry. You, you simply need to have an interest and to be willing to, to be trained. Yeah, is but that what you, it is? Or yeah, do you, 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 must have, you must have been exposed to a specific skill set. Okay. Um, whether it's technical vocational training, uh, whether it's okay. administrative skill sets, but you must already have um, a marketable skill set that we can take and assign to a specific um, opportunity within the industry. For persons who have probably been trained in hospitality, travel and hospitality and tourism, um, but they have never had the benefit of exposure to the industry, these are persons who would perhaps be um, assigned to some of our hotels and they would go through all the very all, all the, the departments so that they can get an idea, a good feel for, for the various departments and the various um, career opportunities for them within the industry. But we are seeing, um, I mean, th the figures speak to the fact that yeah. this is clearly um, create an interest on the part of unemployed persons, you know. Yes, indeed, indeed, impressive figures. I am very excited about the Tourism Enhancement Fund, mm -hmm. and I think it really dispels the notion and the view that many persons would have that the SLHD does not contribute at all um, mm -hmm. to the tourism products or the tourism experience outside of the individual hotels mm -hmm. and, and so on. Many persons believe that more can be done, that if you um, as a sector um, would be beneficiaries of such a large portion of the country's budget, that something would be put back um, in and many persons are of the view that um, just as the other sectors would have to pull their weights basically, which is the term I think that the Prime Minister would have used to when he spoke to um, increased collaboration between the SLHT and the government of St. Lucia, the Tourism Enhancement Fund was launched and as far as I understand it seemed to be doing extremely well and we are beginning to see the benefits of the fund. Personally I've been with the SLHT since 2009 and I can't say in all honesty that I've seen the association shirk its responsibility um, to be an active player in finding solutions and implementing solutions at the SLHDA. Um, it is <clears throat> our modus, modus operandi and I'm, I'm really proud to say that. Um, the general public may not be aware of the, the number of policy discussions that we have had with a number of the, the um, policy makers trying to advise them on how to craft policy that would be not only in the interest of the state, but certainly that would promote and nurture and encourage investment and growth within the private sector. Um, in 2013, when we um, had our pre-budget discussions with the Prime Minister, I know he, he challenged the industry uh, with the formation of a tourism enhancement fund that we happily accepted. Mm -hmm. um, I know there are many who didn't think that um, it was gonna, we were going to be able to pull it off. I probably was one of those. You probably <laughs> 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 but I know the, the, the president of the SLHDA, Carolyn Trubetskoy, and our board of directors committed fully and accepted that challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and I know under the chairmanship of um, Sanovnik Destang, who's the current chairman of the Tourism Enhancement Fund and executive director of the Bay Gardens Group, um, we have done tremendously well. I think when we set out to create the fund, 
our thinking was um, that at, at best we would probably be able to pull in about $1,200 a year EC because the, the fund is voluntary. Yeah? The yes, Prime Minister yes. offered to, um, to couch it within specific legislation that would probably encourage greater compliance, but we said no. I mean, we would, we would appreciate an opportunity to do this um, as a private sector grouping um, and to try to impress upon the members the importance of, 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 of um, supporting that. Mm -hmm. And this is a two US dollar a night coming from guests donation. It's added to their bill. Yeah. They have the option of, of, of saying no to it, but in more than, in, in more than you know, 50% of the instances, it's, it was seen that they are subscribing to that. We have raised um, in excess of $2 million over the first year, so we are pacing well ahead of target. But the subscription and the request and the demands being placed on the fund right now, I can well imagine. It, it far exceeds what we <laughs> anticipated. Also, I mean, to date, we have expended about um, a little over a million dollars in about 25 different projects, mm -hmm. ranging from support for community groups to supporting infrastructural work to marketing the destination um, to human resource development. But essentially, the fund focuses on um, key elements. Mm -hmm. um, all of those forming that um, to, to, to promote the destination, to try to strengthen their product, product development efforts, um, to really focus in on skills training and development and upskilling our, our, our human resources, and, um, and, and being able to support some of the initiatives of the Solution Tourist Board in marketing the destination. Indeed. Um, I know that there, there has been a specific project that has gathered the interest of many solutions, mm -hmm. um, motorists and pedestrians alike. And this is the improvement that we saw to the walkway, the Rodney B. Um, mm -hmm. Marina area. I have noted and I have heard some persons suggest that it be done other places. Mm -hmm. Once you begin to see development, and we see it every day in, in terms of our government projects as well, you begin to do something in one area and every community suddenly sees the need yeah. for the same thing as well. Many persons are hoping that um, the funds of the SLHTA can move beyond the grizzly area and that we can have mm -hmm. some developments in other areas as well. Was this a one-off um, project or will the SLHTA be looking to do um, things like that and to collaborate with the government of St. Lucia, Ministry of Infrastructure, mm -hmm. to invest in um, these types of projects in other parts of the island? Let me say a couple of things, sure. please. Sure. First up, the fund is managed by a board of trustees. Okay. Um, and we have representatives from the Ministry of Finance, mm -hmm. the Ministry of Tourism, the St. Lucia Tourist Board, um, on that board. And so these projects are agreed to discussed, ripped apart, put together, okay. a very passionate discussion and exchange. So Imagine. it's not like the, 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 it's not the, like the I can tourism write you a industry, letter. that's correct, and it's <laughs> not like the tourism industry can, can just run with whatever it deems fit, uh, right? Sure. There is very intense discussion on, on what's approved, what doesn't make the cut. And yes, a number of projects have simply not made the cut. Mm -hmm. um, and that is totally um, after being deliberated upon by the Board of Trustees. The second thing is as it relates to um, that specific project that you spoke about. Um, the fund's resources have been used as far as canneries after the trough. We were oh, yeah. the first agency down there. Uh, we facilitated in over $100,000 worth of relief in the canneries area as a result immediately after the trough. We mm -hmm. assisted in also the relocation of the infant school um, we, we, we refurbished the kitchen area and the, the new area to which they were assigned um, temporarily until the, the new structure became ready. Um, we, we provided food hampers, school stationery, equipment for the, the, the teachers and to use. Uh, we outfitted the entire kitchen. We, we built up a, a special area for the kids to, to dine and to eat. Um, all in the interest of ensuring that you know tourism speaks to the bellies and the minds and to the hands of of our people, and uh, it it was not it was a round robin decision via email you know right. from the time we said look this is a need almost immediately we got the figures in from the Ministry of Education we got the figures in from the Ministry of Tourism, and we dealt with it immediately. Um, we have also done a lot of work supporting uh, our small hotels which are scattered around the island. Mm -hmm. Last year, we've spent over $220,000 promoting and marketing 
uh, small hotels, also in an effort to get them branded under a new, a new campaign um, to finance their presence on our booking engine, to create um, uh, information booklets for them to, to market the group um, regionally or, or at trade shows. So I mean, the, the fund has just been involved in a myriad of, of different things. We've been happy to support training programs um, in, in Wilton's yard, you know, six, six, six kids initiatives done by um, some of our members. Um, so in addition to organizing um, symposiums for mm -hmm. Uh, the farmers and the media practitioners. So, you know, already the 25 projects are so varied that it's tough to have a, a discussion on what the project is doing yeah. just for a specific area in the Groselay constituency. When you look at the fact that the, the dollars of the Tourism Enhancement Fund is reaching St. Lucians right across the island. And, um, and this is after one year of interventions. So we're pretty proud of what it is we've been able to do. And um, we are predicting uh, certain, we are predicting um, an increase in subscription to that fund. Once the information of what it is we're doing starts making traction around the guests and people start seeing and appreciating what it is the fund has been up to, um, we certainly expect that subscription, that subscription to grow. Even before I go in, mm -hmm. into my next area, I must read this comment for you because it's very funny. Mm -hmm. And I think it is what many persons would have been thinking as well. And this business said, good night. I'm very happy to note that the Tourism Enhancement Fund is being used to actually benefit the people of St. Lucia. I, for one, feared that it would simply be taking monies out of the tourist pockets to do things for the hotels. <laughs> so you can see clearly mm -hmm. that people had their own thoughts of what that fund would be used for, but you did indicate that it is managed and that there is a board that includes not just representatives of the SLHT and the hotel mm -hmm. sector, but other interest groups as well. One, sure. one of the key aspects of the fund as well is to ensure that allied members or, or, or non-accommodation members or various groups that are linked and ply their trade from being connected to the tourism have an opportunity also to put their offerings on display. Yeah. And so uh, wherever it's possible to strengthen or build bridges between um, the local private sector, the regional private sector, or the local private sector and allied with, mm -hmm. with the accommodation sector, I mean, the fund really spares no expense in trying to promote and support those types of linkages. Because um, notwithstanding all the fears and apprehensions regarding the fund, um, the process of, 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 of identifying projects, selecting the projects, even the auditing of the fund is very clear and transparent. We will be taking your comments in just a little bit. I've been getting some messages already, but there's an issue that um, we need to discuss before we open up the lines and begin to take our comments and, and our questions. Mm -hmm. It is impossible to speak about tourism if we do not speak about agriculture, although many persons would argue that the linkage is non-existent or mm -hmm. that um, we really need to do more to ensure that there is greater benefits to mm -hmm. the agricultural sector. <clears throat> Last year I noticed and I was very pleased to note that there was an open discussion um, between the Ministry of Agriculture, the farmers themselves, very important, and the SLHTA, um, speaking to a building a better relationship between the two. I was very pleased that it was not simply the Ministry of Agriculture speaking on behalf of the farmers, that they were there mm -hmm. and they were able to exchange, they were able to engage you and they were able to voice their concerns as well because there are concerns and in fact we have been hearing all over the media for quite some time now that our farmers are struggling um, because they're not being paid on time by, by the hotels or that the rates at which the hotels would be purchasing their um, produce would be extremely low. Can you tell us a little bit more about this discussion? Mm -hmm. Why was it necessary to have this discussion? And I am hoping that we have seen some improvements between, um, in, in that relationship between the two parties that would cause greater benefits for both, both sides um, involved in this, in this relationship. In the budget debates last year, mm -hmm. the, minist the Minister for Tourism presented certain figures regarding the increase in consumption yeah. by the tourism industry of locally produced goods and services. Um, these are figures and information put forward by the Ministry of Agriculture. Um, the tourism industry, as far as 
uh, visitors who, who, who overnight on the island, who, yeah. the stayover arrivals. Um, it is in the region of 300 plus thousand persons. These people must all eat, they must all consume. The, <clears throat> the concerns of the agricultural sector has not fallen. These concerns have not fallen on deaf ears with the, with the Hotel and Tourism Association. And we appreciate the fact that in some instances, because of cash flow challenges, um, we have had a number, you know, s some properties have dropped the ball. But we have, we have implemented quite a few measures over the past few uh, months to ensure that we continue to honor that contract um, with the local providers of agricultural produce. One of those being the creation of a factoring fund Okay. that is housed at a solution development bank that allows farmers to be paid within 24 hours of delivering their produce to the industry. Another is the formation of the Agricultural Symposium, which saw over 100 farmers um, attend to have a discussion with us on what some of their challenges are. And those, that discussion, that symposium, that interface between the SLHTA, the Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of Agriculture, and the farmers and fishers themselves have now birthed four different projects that the SLHD expects to, 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 um, to, to roll out over the next year or so, all designed to address the needs of the farmers, those being timely information as to what the needs and demands are, mm -hmm. support to ensure that there's a certain quality of stuff distributed to, to the hotels mm -hmm. um, as a result of, and, and also trying to work with the farmers to ensure that they too um, become more entrepreneurial in how they manage their businesses. Which I believe is, is, is a challenge and yeah. this has been one not just for the tourism um, sector but for their own survival. I mean as we mm -hmm. go around we would be getting these complaints but what is the greatest barrier? What is the difficulty? Because I would assume that even outside of um, you know trying to put measures in place and the whole discussion, before the discussion, we got there because of a reason. I'm sure that there are concerns that um, the SLHTA would have, um, you know, in terms of our, our produce and it's, our farmers. It's essentially a, a, a challenge of, of dependability, you know, um, on, on quality mm -hmm. and on timely delivery when you want it and at, at, what, at what quality um, do you need to have it at. Mm -hmm. um, for many of our farmers, the system of distribution doesn't really lend itself to preserving the, the, the life and the, the look of, of a lot of the produce coming into the hotels. Um, in addition to that, we have, we have the challenge of um, once these items um, reach, you know, where it is that, th 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 that they're intended to go, mm -hmm. there's a lot of there's a lot of um, varying, varying views, you know, different, different ideas of what, how quality is defined, for example. Um. And for an industry that is gonna be, that is gonna be judged by guests who are exposed to a certain quality internationally, um, it's, it's, it's a real challenge, you know, to, to be able to provide, uh, it's a real challenge when you, ha when, you, when you provide substandard quality items on the table, but it certainly is an ongoing discussion and uh, we are very open to that dialogue with the agricultural sector. And I think we've demonstrated that very effectively in the past. And you will see even more of that demonstrated in some of the projects we undertake um, over the next 12 months. What do you think would be the preferred um, mode at this time? Direct um, interaction and interface with the farmers or that there be a central agency uh, uh, um, you know, responsible for mm -hmm. purchasing the, the crops, the produce and so on, and then having a single um, you know, company, a single interface between the hoteliers and the agriculture sector? Well, seasonality is another one of the challenges that we have in the industry. Mm -hmm. And I think very many of, well, many of our hotels have more or less um, adopted various farmers, various farming cooperatives, mm -hmm. and have built certain relationships with these, with these groups over the past few years to nurture and to try to address some of the challenges. We have some very good models in, in, in the Soufre area, in the Viewfort area, mm -hmm. up in Castries as well. We have some very excellent models that we would do well to, to duplicate. Um, but I think generally, again, there is a greater discussion that needs to be had on how we, how we really exploit the 
opportunities for the, for the agricultural sector, even in terms of agro-processing. And these are some of the areas that the SLHDA really wants to get involved in over the next few months, because contrary to popular belief, um, once the items are produced at a world-class standard, mm -hmm. once you can, and, and quality, once you can depend on its availability, um, and the price is, is right, it's competitive, then there is no reason why the industry would not prefer to do business uh, with the farmers locally than have to spend money on importing things over, o from overseas. It's got to be caught up in a refrigerated container that you're going to waste time and money sitting down at the docks before you clear it. Mm. Um, and, and I'm even hoping when you that you have to pay due to There'd be a cost. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, there'd yeah. be a cost to bring it and, in. And the food. sale of fresh produce is also such a, such a tremendous sticking point for our guests, right? Mm. Why would we not want to, to capitalize on that marketing opportunity if what we needed was readily available um, uh, uh, those, that, that, those three criteria. But I'm happy to know we have made some progress, uh, particularly the arrangement through the SLTB, because I, um, through the SLDB, um, this has been one of the areas mm -hmm. of greatest concern, um, particularly for small farmers, when they say to you that I simply do not have the resources to go back and to continue to produce. Um, and so mm -hmm. the issue of payment was one that they spoke very loudly and aggressively mm -hmm. about. So the progress in that area, I'm sure, is, is good news. But one of the other things that we really must focus on as well, and SLHD has flagged that, is the creation of an agricultural information systems, mm -hmm. system. Understandably, some farmers, they, they grow crops and they have no idea how to how to sell them to the industry, what the demand is there. So I think that system will more or less try well, to needs create... what? That's yes. correct, yeah, yeah. And, and when, so that you can have better production being planned. There have been a lot of discussions and attempts of this in the past, I understand, but I don't think SLHD has been in the forefront of that in the past, and we're hoping to be able to, to make a real difference in it. The, 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 the fund of the St. Lucia Development Bank, the, um, that, that, that fund, that factoring fund that allows farmers to be paid within 24 hours, I understand as well that the payment uh, plan within the industry has improved um, to such an extent that farmers are not very keen ah. on taking advantage of, of that fund. Um, my understanding is that there's a 5% charge okay. to, 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 to cash in that invoice. However, um, when you look at the profit margins that are made on produce sold to the industry, okay. one would think that for a 24 hour um, check, to get paid within 24 hours, that 5% was, was really um, something doable. But it, it would seems that there's not heavy traction on that fund, but the industry continues to, to, to produce, to purchase huge sums of, of fruits and vegetables from the, the agricultural industry. And, um, and then, of course, there's the discussion that needs to be had on rationalizing. Um, let us, let's explore the discussion on producing the things that we can get a better dollar for and yeah. supply at the volumes we need for the industry to consume instead of trying to produce every single thing under the sun and complain yes. when it's not being purchased. Indeed, it means that we would have to continue the discussion, continue researching, knowing who the farmers are, where, and, and building better relationships with them. We are due for a commercial break. I know that you're very keen on getting into the discussion, asking your questions. When we come back, we'll be opening the phone lines, and I'll also be reading some of the questions in the comments that I've already received via WhatsApp. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. to In Touch. I'm your host, J.D. Jopier Emmanuel, and my guest is Mr. Norani Aziz. He's the CEO of the SLHTA. Our telephone number will go up on the screen so that you can call in with your questions or your comments. But before your calls, a few messages that I need to read, and of course, I'm sure you would like to address some of the concerns raised. Good evening. What is the strategy being employed by the SLHTA and government to address the level of harassment to the cruise ship visitors in the city of Castries along the various and along the various beaches adjacent to hotels in St. Lucia? That's, um, that's a very good question. Um, that the, 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 the challenge of visitor harassment causes us um, no end of headaches and sleepless nights. Um, it's, it's important for us to understand as a country that tourism benefits everyone. And if you were to have a vacation somewhere, you would not 
you would certainly would not appreciate being descended upon, preyed upon by scores of individuals within a short time frame, each one trying, promising, plying something for hire. Um, but the SLHD, in an attempt to, to try to focus attention on this and to engineer solutions with the issue, um, to the issue, we have flagged to the Prime Minister our interest in the creation of a courtesy police constable corps that would be deployed um, specifically in, in, in areas of high visitor impact in order to help to manage this issue. The Prime Minister has, has actually um, promised to make certain resources available to us to have discussion and, and planning um, conversations so that um, a, a, a model can be, can be generated that best suits um, our needs in St. Lucia. The other issue as it relates to safety and security along the beaches or, well, a security issue, a safety issue rather, that, that really um, we must be mindful and cautious about. We've noted in recent, recent times the incidents of drowning that have yes. occurred on a number of our beaches. We have actually committed to the, um, the creation of a, some sort of a, a flag system on the beaches that would notify um, sea bathers of, whether, of, the, of, of the conditions and whether or not they're right for bathing. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, a caution system. Um, and we've also committed to working along with a number of swim clubs to try to get solutions or a, a bit more aware of uh, water safety, right? Um, we also have an ongoing relationship with the Royal St. Lucia Police Force for um, customer service training um, delivered to the police officers so that uh, they coming across instances of this nature can of course be able to intervene in a manner that is you know non-abrasive and that mm -hmm. is very very conducive to um, to the needs of the parties involved both the operator trying to sell their trade and the the guest who's probably taken aback you know by this harassment um, there's also important what's also important is um, training and development for these operators and we're working with the Ministry of Tourism to try to ensure that we have non-stop training sessions for, for some of these operators. And of course, we have a standing committee um, at the SLHDA that is made up of representatives from the Royal Solution Police Force and the, the, the Ministry of National Security, the Ministry of um, Tourism, to look at safety matters and safety issues, safety and security issues, um, to keep our pulse on, on what's happening within the industry, um, when it's happening, and how quickly the interventions are yielding results. We're also pleased as well that um, the Ministry of Tourism has taken on board full-time a visitor safety and security officer, okay. liaison officer, who we work with full-time to ensure that, um, you know, whatever issues or concerns are raised are being addressed. So we are a bit of, a, a bit of you know, we, we, there is so, still some distance between um, the, if the, the rollout of the actual solutions to okay. address this issue, but Believe you me, we are well aware that it is a serious issue. I wish more solutions would be uh, sympathetic and empathetic to the guests, um, the guest experience on the island or what it is they're looking for. Um, because at the end of the day, it is a behavioral thing, you know, um, that we have to deploy resources to police and monitor yeah. what should be a conversation um, is, is, is not, in my opinion, the best use of funds, but it is absolutely necessary, necessary right now. It is. It yeah. is necessary. And, and the saddest thing about all of this is that it is a, the first impression for many of these cruise ship passengers. This is the first contact that Correct. they would have with St. Lucia, Correct. and it is not a good experience I mean, if, if they're going to spend a few hours here and be bombarded in that way or harassed in that way, I'm not sure that I would be keen on spending a more extended vacation on the island if, if that was my experience. I can imagine. I have a question, and um, we spoke about the Tourism Enhancement Fund a while ago and mm -hmm. you did indicate that um, the demand has been very high mm -hmm. and um, well you explain how it works nonetheless someone asked can the tourism enhancement fund be utilized to purchase jet skis for the marine police unit to patrol the Rodney Bay beachfront areas and also can the, fun the fund be used to demarcate the swim areas in that vicinity bearing in mind high visitor usage the whole issue of safety yes the tourism enhancement fund is in receipt of a proposal from the uh from slaspa and the ministry of tourism for a demarcation project in that same vicinity okay. and the fund is um looking at the best possible um watercraft that would lend itself to monitoring and policing that area um, it may not be the jet ski 
but it may more likely be um, a speedboat or, or a vessel of that nature um, that would not be totally out of commission in the event the engine goes bad. Ah. Um, so there are a number of things to be considered in that, but the project has come before the committee. Um, there is a keen interest in, um, in, in funding it, but I think it's now for us to have a, a, um, a discussion with, with, with SLASPA and the Ministry of Tourism on, on how best the, the resources can be utilized. But yes, that, you should see that in the works very soon. Excellent. I, I think the fact that it's on the table, of yeah. course, is welcome. We have a caller on the line. Hello, good night. You're on the air. Uh, we've lost our caller. 4527347. This is the number to dial. You can call in with your questions or your comments. In the meantime, there's another question here. In terms of the funds of the Tourism en Enhancement Fund, do we see any of the tourism dollar being spent to develop new areas? For example, there is potential in the Viewfront area, particularly near the lighthouse. However, there seems to be an overemphasis on the north because this is where our hotels are located. If it is an enhancement fund, I'm hoping that we can see development of new areas as well. And just before your comments, we'll take our first call. Hello, good night. Hello. Ah, we appear to be having some difficulties with our phone lines, but you can continue to try to call in at 4527347. And the issue of development and trying to find new areas, um, I think uh, I expected a comment to be made about the South. And um, I know that, for example, we have Coconut Bay operating in the south of the island, but the concentration seemed to be in the north of the island mm -hmm. and also in, in the Sufra area. Um, developing the tourism product and taking advantage of you know the opportunities that we have in other parts of, mm -hmm. of the island would that be a matter for the fund or beyond the SLHTA really? Um, I think that development um, as it relates to tourism needs to be led by customer demand mm -hmm. um, but notwithstanding what the guest prefers we need to have a discussion um, at, a, at a ministry level on how we can incentivize investment mm -hmm. in certain geographic spots. It is not something that is new to our country. It's not new. It's not a new practice. But I think if we're serious about trying to um, decentralize tourism, it's important that we look at, at every single mechanism available to us. Mm -hmm to incentivize um, investors to spread out and go target areas that, um, where we want to see the, the, the product developed. And of course, SLHTA can only make recommendations, but it's really for the policymakers and um, to really to accept and to present that, those, those menus of incentives. Indeed, let's see if we can get that call. Uh, sorry about that, but we seem to be experiencing some difficulties. Apparently, um, once I attempt to get that call, it drops. But um, we will work to rectify that issue. But in the meantime, you can continue to send your comments and your questions. A, a question on um, the impact of crime mm -hmm. on the tourism industry. And I think we, we all know, given recent events and um, how it is so easy for information to travel, mm -hmm. especially because of the internet and so on. Mm -hmm. um, what impact do you think it is having on our tourism industry right now? Although I know that um, for this year so far, we've not had any murders, January, February, we are now into, into March, but certainly this would not be the only um, type of crime mm -hmm. that would have an impact on on the visitor, someone looking for a vacation. So what do you think would be the main area of focus mm -hmm. right now, or what is quicker to destabilize the progress mm -hmm. that we have, we have made so far? You know, I am, I am pleased that, you know, we can boast those types of figures, um, but I'm, I'm not sure that the laurels exist on which we, we should be resting right now. Um, if anything can, and I've, and I've said so earlier today, if anything can um, throw us off our pedestal in tourism, it's one bad act perpetrated on a visitor. It does not have to be <clears throat> something violent, but, you know, once it's, it's crime-related, 
the shock waves ripple throughout the industry and it really it's it's it sell, sends a chill down any um, tourism experts spine um, when we have to go through situations like that another one of the things that um that that concerns us is is the number of um unsolved crimes that have been perpetrated against visitors yeah. um, in the past and i mean these are these are certain issues that we really have to take seriously and bring closure to um, if we're to start resting or if we're to start creating any laurels on which to rest. A question coming in. Um, it says there are tourism hostesses in Sufra. Does the SLHC make them part of their training as their job is to give information and stop tourism harassment? And I suppose that would um, be a follow-up to the question. Those, those would probably be hostesses um, um, monitored or supervised by another entity in, okay. in, in Sufra. Yeah. I, I'm, not the, yeah, I'm not, not too the sure SLHD what, directly. Oh, no. okay. I'm not too sure, but perhaps that person can send a follow-up um, mm -hmm. comment. Another question coming in. Um, on the issue of small properties that are not registered, how is it that they are able to operate? Is the SLHD involved in the licensing and standards of these establishments? You can well imagine that a simple thing goes wrong and everyone, including the Sandals and the Big Gardens mm -hmm. and the Jade Mountains, will be paying for it. Mm -hmm. Very, 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 very um, sensible comment right there. Um, no, SLHD does not have a regulatory arm, um, <clears throat> but we do work closely with the Ministry of Tourism and the, to ensure that um, a number of training sessions are conducted um, every, every year to, um, to, to raise the standards of, of any operator who's interested in participating in the program. Of course, these persons, I would assume, would have to be registered with the Ministry of Tourism. Recently, we undertook a project with the Seleucia Tourist Board <coughs> to look at um, a number of properties who have been operating under the radar, if you will. Um, they are registered enterprises, but they're not members of the SLHDA. They want to participate in the branding exercise being piloted by the SLHD and the SLTB at this moment. And so we've offered them um, certain complimentary um, uh, months of membership of the SLHD. So they can really test run their value for membership, um, value for member proposition with the Hotel and Tourism Association. But as it relates to applying their trade, I mean, the internet is 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 an excellent way of, of promoting what it is you have to offer. Whether or not it subscribes to a specific standard, because we, we have received some of the horror stories, yes. whether or not you're probably regulated. Once you go and you put your room out on, on, on certain websites, certain, um, um, certain engines, then you, you become a, there's a captive audience um, yes. for you to reach. Um, but the sad thing is that they're quite correct. Um, when these when these um, when this relationship goes sour with the guest, it is the entire destination that pays the price, not just that that single property. I think we've rectified our problem. So four five two seven three four seven is the number to call into. Good night, you on the air. Actually, we have not. Um, mm -hmm. There is a, a comment and a question to follow up um, on there, and it is related to the whole issue of. Um, the whole issue of registering. And I think it is something that I raised with you in our discussion prior to the show. Good evening, Julia, and a special good evening to your guests. I'm very happy that the SLHD is on and that they could share what they have been doing uh, with members of the public. But my concern comes with the smaller operators. I think the image of the SLHD suggests that they are concerned mostly with the well-established and wealthy institutions and hotels in particular. Take, for example, a smaller operator like myself operating guest rooms. They do not reach out and usually do not get the feeling that they are able to assist you as a smaller operator. Can you imagine what it is like for someone who is just starting out in the business to be approaching and to be sitting among the more established organizations, those who, for example, their marketing budget alone would be the marketing budget alone would be 10 times what your entire establishment would be using up for five years. So there seems to be a whole issue no. of intimidation and... Sure. Um, and, and I can understand that. For a new entrant, it can be very intimidating coming into the tourism industry. But, um, you know, if, if, 
the individual would like to place a call into me at 453-1811 tomorrow four, morning. 453-1811. That's to the SLHDA. Mm -hmm. I'll be happy to have a conversation with them, set up a time that we can sit and we can chat about what their challenges are and to look at how the SLHDA can provide assistance because we are far removed from that misperception that we are here for a select few. But, but you would understand why yeah. that kind yeah. of um, perception would carry around. And I think I mentioned to you, it's not just the SLHDA. I think usually um, people are intimidated by groupings and organizations. Yeah. Once you begin to have a very well-established group and people begin to see, particularly the, the players involved and so on, and their own associations, it could lead to that kind of intimidation. What is a membership? of the SLHDA like because perhaps what we see on the surface is not necessarily a true picture at all as to who the real movers and yeah. shakers are in the SLHDA. Yeah. The SLHDA is made up of over 230 companies of which perhaps 69 or so are accommodation um, properties. So you've got easily two-thirds of our members are allied professionals who sell goods and services to the tourism industry, who have had very modest beginnings, and they have grown their companies. Um, while the offerings of other private sector associations may better suit um, the needs of small businesses, invariably, um, we get a very reasonable throughput of companies indicating an interest or expressing an interest in joining the SLHDA and recent years, we've seen an up, uptake in that, primarily because of our very aggressive networking and marketing forums, all designed to ensure that there's maximum interface between the sellers of these goods and services and, of course, our accommodation sector that, that purchases um, huge quantities of what's on offer. Let's see if the phone lines work now. Uh, unfortunately, not. There is a comment that says, I conducted research on how the yachting industry contributes to sustainable development in St. Lucia, and I find the information on the sector was very difficult. What can be done to improve this? Mm -hmm. Well, I know there is a lot of work being done at the Ministry of Tourism level regarding um, the maritime sector, right? Um, but as it relates to the role that the maritime sector plays within the Hotel and Tourism Association, our directors have identified that specific grouping as um, one that we need to pursue more aggressively in order to, to, to ensure greater subscription to the membership of the SLHDA. Um, but I think that charge is being led um, in varying degrees through the OACS Secretariat as well as through the, um, to the Ministry of Tourism. We spoke a little while ago about um, the Allied members and um, I can't help but think of and focus on uh, taxi drivers. They are mm -hmm. very, very important part of that chain mm -hmm. and um, you know by the time someone comes into St. Lucia Claire's um, you know and goes through the entire process usually this is where that person would be seeking refuge and the whole issue of training um, and standards continue to come to the fore and when we speak of the visitor harassment um, and all of that it usually comes as a result of individuals who may not necessarily be aligned to any um, association mm -hmm. or not training in a specific way, trying to cut the line um, for, mm -hmm. for want of a better expression. What is the interface or the relationship like between the SLHTA and the various associations? Are, are they members or are um, we looking to have a specific conversation with them to see how they can create a better impression um, on the visitor? Well, one of the roles of the SLHDA in recent past, and one that you know we've we've had cause to embrace a lot more passionately, is that is that of mediating conflict between various groups which are members of the SLHDA. And so, um, in recent past, we've done quite a bit of that as it relates to conflicts arising between um, sectors, including the one you mentioned, um, the National Taxi Union mm -hmm. um, has been a member of the SLHDA. Um, but I do think there is significant room for dialogue and improvement in their relationship with the SLHDA. Um, I know I'm set to have a conversation with the, the top brass of the NTU, um, hopefully soon, regarding why there has been um, a breakdown in terms of their expectations and the deliverable, deliverables perhaps at an SLHDA level. But there is certainly a critical need for these sectors to be part of the SLHDA and to be part of that discussion. 
I just want to say to our viewers that if you're hearing a beeping sound, this is mm -hmm. um, because we're trying to deal with the issues that we are currently experiencing for our phone lines. Because surely we would like to hear your views and to get your questions before we end the program. Um, on, on the whole issue of interface and information, I know that what you do would be guided a lot um, by the feedback mm -hmm. that you'd be getting from the various players involved, and critically too from those who visit St. Lucia. Um, last week, the Director of Tourism did indicate that a lot of what they do the marketing, the new directions would be guided by information gathered on, on um, from people who visit Inusha and people who wish to visit Inusha as right. well. We continue to win awards. Last year was a tremendous year. Mm -hmm. um, best honeymoon destination, our individual properties are doing extremely um, well and I know that it has a lot to do with that visitor experience. Those who come, the impression of, of St. Lucia what is, is the feedback, feedback like from our guests? And do the awards matter, really? Um, do they matter Absolutely. to, to um, how people view St. Lucia? Do they improve our um, marketability, our favorability as a destination? You know, we have a lot of untapped potential in St. Lucia. Um, the awards do matter, yes, because guests use, they look to each other um, each other's experiences to guide their decision making uh, of which destination to go to um, for a vacation. So these awards do matter and they're, they're really testament of the tens of millions of dollars that properties spend on an annual basis in promoting themselves and in ensuring that their staff are trained to deliver nothing but the best to the guest, um, to, to the visitor. Now, invariably when you speak with the guests, um, the, the, the recurrent theme they speak to the hospitality of St. Lucians. Um, I think it is one of our, it is, we have a competitive advantage in that regard, but it's really for us to use that as the foundation upon which to build impeccable, impeccable customer service skills and um, technical competencies so that at the end of the day, you know, we can really honor the promise that we make in those marketing dollars. Now, you started your comment and your question by speaking to the fact that, you know, the industry is listening to the guests. Yes, the industry is listening to the guests to get a sense of what it is they want so that that can guide and inform product development. The industry is listening to investors so that the investment landscape can be created to facilitate investment. But the SLHD is also listening to our members and to the employees of the industry. And it is the, on, on the heels of, of this dialogue, on such a dialogue, that the, 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 the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association initiated a group medical insurance plan for employees of member companies that would reduce or offer them um, the opportunity to have medical insurance um, for a premium of, of as little as 50 EC dollars a month. And this, of course, is available to members of companies that are, to employees of companies which are members of the SLHTA. Um, and I mean, it, it, is, it is a rate that, is, that far exceeds the best rate out there on the, on the market right now. And we are working hard and fast to encourage our members um, to take advantage of these opportunities for employees. You All spoke about um, the untapped potential <coughs> a little while ago, and I cannot help but think of, of the markets that we have not yet entered, and we seem not to be paying so much attention to as we would do to the US, the UK, and Canada. Um, a lot has been said about um, going into Latin America and, you know, into Brazil and, and so on to try to get um, people there to come into St. Lucia. The challenge has been airlift, um, mm -hmm. but according to the SLTB, there has been increased interaction and discussion. Um, do you see this as one of the areas you would refer to as untapped potential, or do you mm -hmm. believe that we, at this time, are best placed focusing on our traditional markets? I think we have to approach it like, like any other business would approach its growth. There needs to be sufficient allocations for research and product research and development. Mm -hmm. And so while you focus on your core cash cow and your, your solid revenue generating um, opportunities, you do not lose sight of the fact that you need to be planning for the next horizon, the next event horizon. The SLHT has already initiated discussions um, with the ambassador for uh, Brazil. We, are already have, have, we have already in, engaged in discussions on the possibility of um, language training in Portuguese for our staff, all in, in an attempt to um, start readying ourselves for that possibility. 
and um, we are also discussing um, the translation of some of our destination um, portals and websites and, and product information in Portuguese so that we can start reaching out um, to, to potential business volumes in, in Brazil. So while uh, we have to remain cautious of how we spend our very meager marketing sums, um, like I said, it, it is a discussion that we need to have on the table and to be planning for that, that event. I have a comment that says, I live in Barbados, but I am St. Lucia, and I travel to St. Lucia very often. I believe that not enough is being done to focus on the regional market. The SLTB, the SLHD, the government of St. Lucia, all are guilty of the very same sin. We pitch to the US, we pitch to the UK. Once they sneeze, we are in trouble, while we continue to leave St. Lucians who live in the region stranded, and other persons who are interested in visiting St. Lucia stranded as well. What really can be done about Liat? And I would like to know whether Mr. Aziz is of the view, just as I am, that the government really need to do something about the taxes on the regional tickets. Mm -hmm. I think we're guilty as charged. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we have um, collectively explored the, the full potential of the regional market. And the figures are there. Many would argue that it's easy pickings. Um, but we do not have the type of presence or the type of marketing spend in, in areas like Trinidad, Hello. for example, or the French islands that we ought to. Do we have well, a caller? Yeah, good night. Oh, good night. How are you? I'm Nemish up here. I'm good to see you. Thank, your thank you so much for calling. Yes, I think we have rectified our problem finally. Okay. Mr. up here. Yes. I, didn't, I, I wasn't there for the beginning of your show. Sure. And, and, and I don't know if you have a bench on... A, a pastor is Mr. 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 Aziz, right? Mr. Aziz? He's, yes, he's right here. Let me just ensure that he can hear you. Yes, can. I can. Okay, sure. Okay. Mr. Aziz, I don't know if you were there some years ago. What has happened to that show that you have before, the Miss SLHTA show? What, what happened to that show? Um, you know, that show is, that show has, has been, there's a decision by the, by the board of directors that certain events and activities which consume a lot of the energy at the SLHTA may be best, may be better placed for uh, outsourcing. And so what we have done at an events committee le level is engaged um, a specific operator who is interested in, in, um, in, in, in rolling that show out on behalf of the SLHDA. And I expect you are going to see it back on the cards um, relatively soon. Because that show used to be a very top show some years ago. Yeah. And out of the movie, I just see the top. You don't hear nothing from SLHDA. No, you're right. Many years ago, I know there was a huge subscription to it. But as it relates to um, dollars and cents wise, um, I think it is something that has reached a specific stage where it, it, it commands a certain degree of, of attraction among, among the um, industry workers and among certain companies. And I think that it is best poised um, for private sector, for, for a private entity separate and apart from the SLHDA. For ex to execute right now, and I think um, that decision has been well received from many of the stakeholders that we have chatted with, and um, I expect that you're going to see that back on the horizon pretty soon. I hope so. Sir. Are you going to yeah. be a contestant? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I always talk about them, you know. Ah, okay. Yeah. I, I thought you had a special no, 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 interest no. in being yeah. Mr. SLHDA. No, no, no. I always talk about them. Ah, no, okay, no. sure. Thank you so All much right. for calling. Yeah. We have another call on the line. Good night, you on the air. Hello. Good night. Hi. Good night. Um, trying to get right to the lines of that. But I would like to ask Mr. Aziz, I would like to ask Mr. Aziz, what is, what is there for people at the grassroots level, such as um, uh, the Denry Seafood Fiesta, mm. which is a, a, a tourism product. What is there to, to enlighten, to make it more, more, I would say, you know, more, more open to, 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 to guests because now the, the, the participation is dwindling. Even the ladies on the association has dropped off. It needs some structure, it needs some management. How do they approach his office for, for, uh, for help? I'll listen to you over the air. Sure. Thank you so much for your question, Carla. And I appreciate that. It's part of the product development drive, the product diversification. These are experiences, once they are executed within a very safe and healthy environment, guests would love to immerse themselves in this spirit of, of these offerings. The SLHDA is working very, very hard with the Groselay Town Council 
to get the Grosley Friday night street jam, street party, mm -hmm. um, properly set up and executed. We have had a tremendous number of complaints from visitors who were harassed, wow. who were um, approached for uh, narcotics, um, who have just been um, verbally abused, you know, by a number of persons within, you know, at, at that street party. And wow. over the past few months, we have been working very closely with the Grosley Town Council to ensure that certain standards are employed and, and, and NEMO, for example, mass crowd events are implemented and adopted. Um, so I think um, we're, we're already seeing improvement in the quality of that offering, right? Uh, we are working with the Ancillary um, Seafood Vendors Association right now. Um, very soon we should be rolling out a cadre of training for them uh, in HACCP and standards, um, upselling, sales technique, entrepreneurship, small business management. And we're, we're, you know, we're on the ball where they're concerned. We are also working with a group out of canneries um, which manufacture 